Hey guys, it's Misty with My Paper Cuts. And today I'm coming on with my Saturday morning makes for this week. Um, this is a hashtag that was started by Jill Norwood. I will link her channel in the description below, but basically all you have to do is put the hashtag on any video that you want to share each Saturday, showing what you've been working on, uh, what projects you've got going. It doesn't have to be just paper crafting, it can be anything. She just wants everybody to share their art and take some time to create each week. So I think it's a fantastic uh, hashtag. I uh, just wanna say thanks to Jill if she takes time to watch this video. She's always so supportive of everyone and just the love she has for what we do and what we create is just so genuine that I just, I just really adore this hashtag. So if you have a chance each week to participate, it's a lot of fun. Um, this is only my second one. Um, I was going to participate last week, but I'll get into why I didn't in just a moment. But um, yeah, so I'll just link her down below. Um, for this week, um, I'm kind of, um, I started off with a challenge from my buddy P over at Whimsical Endeavors. Hi P. Um, we like to throw challenges at each other once in a while and I have a huge paper collection. And one of my weaknesses is definitely Cartabella. I love the texture and the thickness of Cartabella paper, so I have quite a few collections of it. Um, so she challenged me to use some. And so for the last couple weeks, I've had stacks of Cartabella sitting on my desk trying to decide which one that I dare to cut into. And then sadly, <clears throat> sadly last weekend, my granny passed. Um, she was my last living grandparent and um, due to all the circumstances in the world right now I couldn't attend her funeral but it was on Thursday and I had to watch it on face Facebook live so I came into my craft room where my larger computer is and I was watching it in here and I looked over and I saw all the cartabella sitting on my table and I I, this one jumped out at me, which is Country Kitchen by Stephen Duncan. Um, I love Stephen Duncan's artwork. I think it's so fun. It's so retro and vintage, and I don't know. It's just really cool. He also makes a Halloween one that I love. Um, but anyway, I was very inspired to do something in honor of my granny. Um, so Thursday night I started this, and I'm really surprised that I got done. I guess I was really determined. Um, but I decided that I wanted to make recipe books. Um, my granny loved to cook. Oh my goodness, she loved to cook. And being in Alabama, she lived, Susan, if you're watching, she lived in Town Creek for quite a while. Um, in the middle of nothing. <laughs> um, you know, just, we always had bulls and chickens and, and we had turkeys that we slaughtered every year for Thanksgiving and just a very country life with my granny and papa. So I just thought that this would be perfect in her honor. And I had enough of the paper because I have both this collection, which is the actual delicious, thick textured, regular Cartabella paper. But I had this pad, this 12 by 12 paper pad that they were doing at uh, Tuesday morning for a while. Um, these are single sided and it's only some of the patterns. There are several patterns in this one that are not in here. Um, but they are single sided and they're just this regular smooth cardstock. So I just decided that since I had enough that I would make a recipe book for myself and one for my daughter. So while the books in themselves are basically done, there is the final touches and the decorating of the cover to be done. But I decided to save that for when my daughter comes to visit so we could do it together so she could decorate hers exactly how she wants it to be done. Um, so I, I saved the sticker sheet from in here and then I also have, um, here I'll just show you, that here's the sticker sheet. So lots of really cool stickers and then there's this, I have this ephemera pack that goes with it as well, which is a lot of tags and stuff. So I thought um, that that might be fun to do with my daughter when she comes to visit because of course we couldn't be together for granny's uh, services either um so that was hard but so that is the plan um i guess without further ado i'll just show you the albums i kind of i left this one open just so i could walk you guys through it but the, here they are so this one right here will be my daughter's and this one will be mine <clears throat> they are um 
seven and a half inches wide, eight and a quarter inches tall with a two and three quarter inch spine. And I had to make their covers twice because I made the covers first, which I don't normally do. Normally I make all the pages and then I can measure how thick my spine needs to be. And then I'll make the cover um, once I've got the pages assembled so I can allow enough room. Um, for some reason I didn't do that. I, I don't know if it was the grief or exhaustion or what it would be, but um, I just did it backwards. And so now I have two covers I can't use because the first set I made were too small. But so I will show you the, the, the basic. So hers has um, a lot of the veggies and fruits and such. Her boyfriend is actually, he runs a greenhouse and he's very much into farming. So I thought that that would suit them better. Um, there is the rose paper. I also added these, there's one on mine as well. Um, so we can do dangles or tassels or however we want to. We could do beaded, you know, like a chunky charm or however we want to do it. Um, I just wanted to have those there in case we wanted something because if we decided later that we did and these weren't in there, it's really hard to put them in after. So, And then the back of hers has all the, the jars for canning. And I tied hers. They're both tied with sari silk. Hers is this really cool tan. And mine is the brown. And so the cover of mine has the um, the milk caps. Um, everything is actually, I went around with the tracing wheel and did some piercing. Um, and then I inked everything with um, vintage photo distress ink. Not the, the bottom one there is oxide, but the, the regular distress ink. Um, so I did that and then the side of mine has the stripe and the back has the stoves. My idea for the cover of mine, and if she wants to do it, of course it would work as well, is I have the Tim Holtz um, stove die set that has the shaker window and I thought it would be really cute to do the, the stove with um, little hearts in the shaker because I mean that's, my grandma always fed us, <laughs> that was her thing. She was always feeding you, so that was the way she showed her love. So anyway, so um, the album itself is actually from a um, tutorial. I was looking for a recipe album tutorial, and I found one on Scrap Queen on her YouTube channel. So um, I will link her down below. Um, I did change it a little bit. Um, she had a laminated cover, which I didn't want because this is Cartabella paper and I love the feel of their paper. Um, she also used elastic binding so that each section could come out and I don't really like the elastic binding. Um, I find because I live in Arizona that the heat really destroys um, elastic pretty quickly. It just dries everything out here. so. Um, I didn't do that. I did the regular regular binding. And then on her pockets, on her pocket pages, um, she did acetate windows. And again, because I'm in Arizona, I don't really like acetate windows. So I don't usually do them in my albums. Um, I just find it's harder for the glue to stay with the acetate for a long time. Um, and if you're putting things in and out and it needs to be flexible, it's just not a good mix. So... I did leave some things untied in here just to make it easier to show you, but I also made my album bigger than hers because I wanted to use four by six recipe cards and hers had to be smaller because her pages were definitely smaller than that. So anyway, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> um, so the inside of each um, album in the covers has pockets in the covers. And this is where I put, um, there was a sheet of four by six cut aparts there were two sheets and so I put one set in mine and one set in hers and so I put three in the front and three in the back but they can be used anywhere so there's six pages I don't know if you can see that there's six pages so there's um, basically three sets of two and each one has this um, tie pocket on the front which is a nice big pocket um, I liked what she said about her idea for these big pockets and I will cover that, Brad, if you guys can see that. I will cover that with something. I just haven't decided what yet. But her idea was, you know, everybody has like magazine clippings. And I know that's not really a thing anymore. But I still have stuff I save for magazines. And so I do like the idea of having these pockets. But it's also just some extra space just in case you want to save other recipes. So, and then 
After that, there's a um, kind of a two page little spread here and it has five pockets on each side and the pockets hold a four by six card perfectly. So it's like a stacked pocket. So this will hold each two page section will hold um, 10 recipe cards and then plus you have the pockets. So, um, so there's that. And then on the back is another large, large pocket. So, and then what I like to do is whenever I have two that face each other, I try to keep them coordinating. So for this, I put the daisy paper on the inside there. And then here's another stacked pocket. Oh, there was um, a little edge here where I used just a little border die to make it just a pretty fancy edge. So there's 10 more cards. And then here's the chicken paper with another big pocket. And then I punched out some of the chickens. I punched them out to make my closure here on this side. It always takes these a long time to break in. And then the chicken paper is also on the inside there. And then this one has another scene and the 10 pockets and then the back page has another large pocket there so i look forward to decorating these with my daughter and um just being able to share some of our favorite recipes from granny and um i guess that's it i am <laughs> probably gonna go have another good cry now but thanks for stopping by and i hope you guys have a wonderful day Bye-bye.